What's up everybody, this is Danny and smartphones can shoot some amazing looking video and I've been known to produce entire videos shot entirely on a mobile phone. But a lot of people keep asking me, how do I do this? What do I need to get started? And how can I get those looking like yours do? If you're interested in video production but are on a budget, then this is a the perfect way to get started. So I'm gonna give you top five tips on how to get amazing looking smartphone video from the shots down to how you can clean it up in post-production. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is choose a smartphone and not all smartphones are created equal, but any one that you see here will definitely work. But what's awesome about the Android side is that the cameras go all the way up to a 4K resolution, which is absolutely unbelievable. But if you don't wanna choose the Android side, then the tried and true iPhone 6 or 6 Plus will definitely work well. They have shot a lot of cool footage with this phone, so you will have no problem with this whatsoever. You are limited to 1080p on the iPhone, but for most that won't be a problem at all. But if you're choosing a smartphone, I would definitely stray away from the budget phones. Now, if this is all you have, then go ahead and get started with that. But your video quality is not going to be the greatest on these budget phones. The newer iPhones are always a sure shot, but if you wanna know which are the best in my opinion, I would go for the Samsung Galaxy S6 or the S6 Edge or the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 because they all go up to 4K resolution in video, they all have optical image stabilization, and the video looks absolutely fantastic coming off of these phones. After choosing a smartphone, the first thing you're gonna need to do is purchase a mount. These are absolutely essential to keep your footage stable while shooting. There are a ton of them out on the market and they range from cheap to pretty expensive, but the first one I ever purchased was the Nice Stabilizer and it's really cheap, it's really simple, and it's just basically a clip that holds your phone. So this is the XL mount and it does fit the iPhone 6 Plus, so I do use this one quite often and it just hooks right onto the tripod. But if you wanna get a little bit more complicated, then here is the cinema mount that I just recently got and this thing is a little bit more professional. With this thing, you have a lot more options. So think about this as more of a cage and a stabilizer combo. But it fits pretty much any phone that I've tried so far. All you need to do is just adjust it to the camera hole on the back. And it even comes with a macro and a wide angle lens if you wanna do some more creative stuff with it. The nice thing about this is it does have a grip on the side, so if you wanna do some handheld shots for a little bit more cinematic look, you can do that, or you can just put it directly onto a plate and hook it onto your tripod. So this is the next topic that we're gonna talk about is getting and choosing a tripod. I get this question all the time. What kind of tripod should I get? So if I had to suggest a tripod, I would get one with a fluid head mount because if you just get a standard tripod, if you try to pan it all, you're gonna get some really jerky motions here and it's just not gonna look professional at all. What you want are these silky smooth pans and these are only achievable with fluid head tripod mounts. So you don't have to buy the most expensive one out there, so don't do that because I used to use a $100 one and it worked just fine. Most of these tripods have some type of tensioning tool, so make sure you put the tension on there tight enough to where you get a good amount of resistance. And the tip that I can give you is to use one or two fingers and just push very lightly. That'll help you to get a really nice smooth pan. These tripods can do vertical panning as well, so use that to kind of vary up your shots and give your video a little bit more flair and some variety. Another great tip is to use your mount and tripod as a tool because you don't need a slider to do some of these cool shots. Like if you've ever seen some of these pull away shots, these are mostly done with just the mount and the tripod itself. So you can pull it back like this and do the best you can and you can stabilize it in post and make it look like that. Now here is probably one of the most important tips. Smartphones usually hunt for focus, and you can see it right here. Without even doing anything, it's just hunting for focus. So when you are shooting, make sure that you lock that focus on whatever software that you have. So if it's not available in your regular phone app, then make sure you get something like open camera. But here on the Galaxy S6, if you just tap on the screen, it will actually take away your autofocus. So now your focus is locked, and then now you can get that smooth and nice shot that you need without all that hunting. If you wanna take it to the absolute next level, then you can get yourself a slider. Now you don't have to have a motorized one, but you can do it by hand. But if you have a motorized system, it is a lot smoother and it can give you some incredible looking cinematic shots just like this. And it can really elevate your smartphone video to the next level. 
but there's no need for all of that stuff. When I first got started, all I had was a tripod mount and a tripod. So you learn to master these things, you can still shoot some incredible looking video with just a smartphone, a mount, and a basic tripod. The principles of shooting with a smartphone are the same as a basic camera, but lighting is a really sensitive issue when it comes to shooting with them because they are small sensors, they tend to overexpose, and when you put them in really severe light like this, you're going to end up getting some really blown out footage, the colors are going to be really funky, and it's just not going to be good looking video. So you really have to mind where you're shooting when you're shooting with a smartphone. So take yourself out of that bright area and go into a more shaded area and you're going to find that your footage is a lot better looking and you're going to get better colors and even though it's just a little bit overexposed still we can fix that in post and i will show you that later on in this video Usually shooting outdoors yields the best looking video and timing wise right around dusk or so I get the best outcomes. But if you're going to shoot inside, supplemental lighting is definitely a key factor. You're going to need to get some umbrella lights or some studio lights because if you don't have that light you're going to get some nasty grainy looking footage. So as you can see here the more light that you add on like the principles of any camera you're going to get much better looking video. So to round things up, let's talk about post-production a little bit. And there's a ton of software for you to edit with, like your Adobe Creative Cloud, you have Final Cut Pro, and then you even have your basic stuff like iMovie, Windows Movie Maker, and even Sony Vegas. I am currently using Final Cut Pro, but you can choose any software that you like. And you don't have to have expensive software either, because the first two years that I made videos, I actually used iMovie, which comes free with the Mac. You'd be pretty surprised at what cheap and free software can do. So when it comes to editing smartphone footage, it tends to overexpose very heavily. So what you need to do is just tack down the exposure some and then drop the shadows to give it a little bit more contrast. And even something so simple like this can make your footage look so much better. Another cool way to add some extra flair in post-production is to use some stock footage and some really cool transitions as you saw in the beginning of this video and this was made possible by Videoblocks. Videoblocks is a subscription service that has some stock footage, some backgrounds, and some awesome After Effects templates for you to take your videos to the next level. What's also awesome is if you're a creator, then you can upload your motion background or footage to video blocks and they take zero commission and you can make money. If you're working with 4K content, then they do have 4K videos on here, which is very nice. They have some cool time-lapse backgrounds and I can use some of these for different effects and transitions. And if you're looking for a really cool motion intro, like you see on a lot of these tech videos, then they do have After Effects templates right here for you to make those awesome intros with. So go ahead and try video blocks for free. I will leave the link in the description section below. What's awesome is if you subscribe to them once, then all the new footage that comes on there, you don't have to pay any more. Cool stuff. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Take what you learned and shoot some amazing looking video with your smartphone. So if you enjoyed this video, then make sure you go ham on that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.